Police in Las Vegas found themselves in the middle of a UFO mystery last month after an... It was big eyes, they have big eyes. They saw something fall out of the sky too, so that's why I'm kind of curious. Do you see him now, sir? Mythical Legends Podcast with your host Daniel Barnett. So, welcome to the M- Mythical Beast Podcast. Today is our um, we have two guests. Um, they are co-founders of the Lost Frequency po- Podcast. Uh, one one of them is wi- is a witness of two UFO sightings. Um, please welcome Rye Voss and Tom Fr- Franklin. Thank you both for spending time with me and Craig Barnett t- today. Rye and Tom, how are you both? We're doing great. We're doing, doing great. Thanks for having us on here, Daniel. Hi, Daniel. How's it going? <laughs> Amazing. Where Where in the world are you Are you guys based? Uh, we are actually based in the Gulf of Mexico in the state, uh, like in in, uh, in Mexico itself. Oh, amazing! Wow. Yeah, yeah it's uh, uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty nice out here, nice and warm, and we hot. record uh, <laughs> we always record our podcasts on the rooftop here in Mexico, and that's where we are again. Oh my goodness! Oh, amazing. That's, 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 that sounds better than where we are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean you mean in, you mean in sunny England? Oh yes, but it's not. Do you know what? It's actually not too bad today. We haven't got to wear about sixteen layers today. It's all right. <laughs> See, that's, that's, the, that's the opposite here, though. It it gets so hot and so humid. You know, it's uh, it's there's uh, there's no reprieve from this uh, from this. Yeah, you here. can't just take more clothes off and you just then you become <laughs> naked. You, na- you can't just be naked walking around the streets, so, though. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So, could you guys tell our listeners about the lost frequency podcast and and how it got started and a little bit about yourselves okay my name is tom franklin i'm originally from baltimore maryland and uh i was uh, lived in germany for 20 years uh former u.s army soldier um moved to mexico for um pandemic reasons and uh, i met rye uh here uh he, we both uh, showed interest in these, you know, paranormals and cryptids and all the above, little people, all those kind of things. And uh, we found out that we had a good rapport between us. Uh, he's a well-spoken person, and I think I do pretty well myself. <laughs> and um, yeah, we just hit it off, and uh, so the, uh, so we created a podcast called The Lost Frequency, um, Bry's idea, and. Um, we talk about everything. We 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 uh, in, interview everything. Everybody who's had um, the most craziest stories we've ever heard in my life. Uh, maybe not rise so much, but definitely for me. So I'm kind of like um, a newcomer and in a lot of areas. And we talk to people about you know, Dogman and Bigfoot and UFO encounters and lucid dreaming. And uh, yeah, we've we've enjoyed it so far, and we can uh, we plan on continuing. Oh, amazing. And yeah, so that was uh, so that was Tom, and I'm Rai. Um, originally from Alberta, Canada, and I too moved to, to Mexico to get some reprieve from uh, some craziness that was going on in Canada, and moved down here. Been living down in Mexico this time for two years. Ran into Tom, and we hit it off pretty well. And yeah, like like you said, the Lost Frequency is all about investigating, um, looking into all these crazy experiences that people have, and giving them a platform for them to talk about their uh, um, their experiences. Because there's a lot of places people feel very um, afraid. You know, they feel they're going to be ridiculed for mm-hmm. saying and telling about these experiences they've had. And we want to let them know that this is the place where you know we believe you and. We're going to ask you questions. We're not going to question your experience. We're going to ask you questions about your experience because we believe that there is so much strange things out there, so much unexplained, and you know we just want to hear your stories. That's what we do at the at the Lost Frequency Podcast. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Um, so, right, this is a 
question for you. Um, can you describe um, how the UFO looked that you witnessed? All right. So the day that I witnessed the UFO, and I, I was actually not going to be one. There is actually three the same day at the same time. Oh, yeah. So two were very similar. Um, uh, it was they were too far away. All I saw was these two black objects, and and the other one, the best way to describe it describe it was this um, undulating, pulsating white plasma is what i can say you know up in the sky i've seen a video someone else has posted a video of almost the identical thing i've seen which you know you it, it almost looks like a cloud but it's too solid and it's quickly changing form and just changing shape continuously it's just growing expanding shrinking on a continuous fashion um it was i remember sitting there staring at this in the middle of the day i was in a grocery uh parking lot grocery uh store parking lot and I'm looking up and I'm like, what am I seeing? And no one else in this parking lot is looking up. And I'm, I'm like, am I alone? No, no, there's other numerous other people. I'm just I'm just caught staring at this uh, this this thing floating in the sky. And it was like my attention was told to look up there. So I'm watching this this pulsating, this white pulsating thing. Um, it was about the size of a, a softball. We'll say about the size of a softball, maybe a little bit uh, at times bigger, like a baseball. I mean, sorry, like a basketball and then times smaller, such as like a golf ball. It was just constantly changing and it wasn't slow changing. You couldn't have mistook it for a cloud because of how fast it was changing shape and just, uh, you know, modulating. Um, so I was sitting there watching this and it's slowly moving across the horizon. And that's when I looked over to my far left, and that's when I saw these two black um, objects, and they were on an intersect course with with themselves. They were they came into a point where they were going to intersect, and but I was looking back and forth. I'm looking back at this white object, looking back at these objects, these two black objects. So I did not see them combined, but at one point when I did look back, there was only one object because they they were. They're pretty much going to hit into each other. There was one object at that point, and it took off in a different direction. It was where these two objects were coming in at a 90 degree angle to one another. When they joined, this object continued off um, like in a trajectory that was about, 45 about a 45 degrees yeah. off of that one. And it just continued along this, this straight flight path. Now, you know, would it be an airplane? Sure, if they didn't if they didn't join together become one you know but it's these two black objects mm. not an airplane not any type of craft i know that does that now again i'm looking back and forth after these two objects join together i look back at this white undulating object it is now gone completely gone from it it just evaporated somehow it disappeared it went somewhere i have no idea where it went and I sat there and this whole event took about, I'd say 10 minutes. I've watched this for about 10 minutes in the middle of the parking lot with all my groceries sitting there in my cart, uh, in my trolley, wondering why is no one else looking at this, you know? And I had a phone at that time. My phone was pretty, pretty bad. So I couldn't sit and I couldn't take any pictures. Um, but I did get on the phone with my wife at the time telling her, what I was seeing, you know, what I was witnessing that was unfolding before me. And I sat on the phone with her about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, I ended up taking some panoramic pictures of the location with my good, uh, I went back after with my good camera, took some cam panoramic pictures, put them together, and I drew this all out, all the trajectories of where these items, these uh, items, <laughs> these objects were, and then I mapped them out just so I had this kind of, you know, some sort of information that I could look back on. Back on. It wasn't for... You know, I didn't do this for clout or to share with other people. It was just like, I need to remember this. I need to, you know, to know this. This was a crazy, amazing event that I saw. Wow. <laughs> when, when, when actually was this? This was back, I believe it was around 2014. I'm going to say, oh, okay. I'm going to guess oh, about wow. November of 2014. Yeah. And I wow. was uh, and the location. I was in northern Mexico in the state of Chihuahua, in the city of Chihuahua. Wow. Has, have, did, um, obviously, when you say about people being around you, was there yep. anyone at all that was like looking looking the same way or, you know, no one, no one at all? No, it, I, I find this very peculiar. There's sometimes where you see something and you even I've been in a, a situation where I've seen something that was very peculiar and you're trying to tell people to look at it and they mm. don't want to. And, you know, and we've seen this with some of our guests that we've interviewed that, you know, you try telling people, but 
like uh, our guests have tried telling other people and they don't want it to wreck their paradigm of what their reality is. Because if you show them this, if you introduce these new things to them, it blows the reality apart, you know, and it's it's it blows their life apart. You know, it changes everything that they understand as in this universe. And some people don't want that. They just refuse it. So following on from that, you know, I'm really intrigued to see like, what did your wife say? She was, she was like, she couldn't believe me. So she's just on the phone. She's like, well, tell me what it's doing. Tell me what it's like, you know, and I'm yeah. trying to describe it the best I can. And it's so difficult. It's just like, it's this white pulsating cloud. And like I said, I have not seen anything like it until I would say two weeks ago, only two weeks ago is when I saw wow. this video posted. And I will share this video oh, wow. on your, on your Facebook page where I found yeah. this guy posting this video and it's almost identical. The only thing I would say would just that the one that I saw was pulsating and moving and changing shapes a little bit faster than what this one was, but it was identical. And I was so surprised that I hadn't recounted the story in quite a long time. I've kind of held the story in, not, not for any reason, just didn't feel a purpose to tell people. And I told it recently. And then all of a sudden, after I tell this, I find this video um, mm. and I'm like this, and I wasn't even looking for this video. I find this video, someone, uh, it was actually a, a guy that contacted Tom and he he has these uh youtube this youtube channel and i just went and i decided to go on which is renaissance man i'm like oh i'm just gonna go watch this one i watched two of his videos and one is the one that had it so that video is that what, what time period is that from is that from the same oh, sort of time or or do you I, know good good question i don't know that i don't know and it's very yeah. very strange is that in this video they have another black small object flying through the screen as well so there was these similarities mm. of oh, wow. this white pulsating object and then this black object flying through now you know to describe them as a a ufo a I guess it would be, you know, is it alien? I don't know. Is it, it's an un unidentified flying object. It was an object or something in the sky. I have no idea. It's very different from everybody else's, you know, UFO um, descriptions, you know, of these crafts with lights. These were different. This was different. Maybe it was more on those smaller ones were more on the line of the, the Tic Tacs they're talking about. Um, but these ones actually moved slow. They were moving slow. Did you? Did anyone ever ask you? You know, from an authority point of view, you know, did have you ever been contacted by anyone? Or you know, obviously getting that story out there. Has anyone from uh, I guess, like a government kind of element kind of contacted you about it? No, no, I've never been contacted about that. Uh, I I feel that maybe you know, the more that we do our podcast, uh, mm, the maybe con there's the more be, contact will receive. The more contact will receive. <laughs> yeah, you know, the more you're yeah. out, more you stepping out, kind of stepping out into the spotlight, so to speak. I, I believe that uh, you're, you're putting yourself out there and more noticeable. So this was a story that I've kept to myself mostly. And again, not, not for any reason that I'm trying to, like I'm afraid of what other people will think. I just didn't talk about it much. Um, I, I've gotten past that point now where, you know, I would say maybe 15 years ago, I might have cared a little bit more. Now, I don't really care. You know, I don't care if people, yeah, I, I tell these stories. I'm not telling it because I'm not trying to convince people to believe of what I saw. I know what I saw. I don't have to convince people. This is my truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that was amazing. Um, ju just listening to that. Um, what, what do you enjoy most about running a successful podcast? <laughs> I wouldn't say it's quite successful yet, but we're definitely on our way there, Daniel, and we appreciate you having us on. I think the secret is to know that it's going to be a grind. It's going to take a while. I think the secret is to know is to be genuine. Um, from my point of view, for sure, to have levity, to because you know a lot of these experiences are very traumatic for these people. You know, I've had experiences as well, and they've uh, definitely left a mark on me. But if I can, you know, you know, your aunt dies or something like that, if you can make a joke about, you know, what are we going to get in the inheritance for a second? The person go, you know, like, oh, you son of a gun. And then you look at mm -hmm. you and they'll call you back like a week later. Hey, thank you for that. And that's kind of I think one of the big things. And another one is just just to be open and um, be willing to listen to people and what they have to say, because a lot of people just kind of want to tell somebody uh, what it is that they uh, they have experienced. Oh, nice. Um, do you have any instances of any UFO sightings in the UK? Me? I never. Uh, I've only. I've only landed at Heathrow one time, so no. 
All right. <laughs> we uh, we apologise for our, our our airline systems and stuff in advance. Um, oh yeah, there was, a, there was a yeah. I had to take a bus all the way to the terminal. So yeah, that was I guess oh. that was kind of that was pretty uh, unusual. But yeah, um, I do I do apologise. I think what Daniel's getting at there is: um, Have you ever had anyone on your podcast that that um, has experienced anything from the UK? That we haven't yet. Uh, we do have two upcoming guests. Uh, not UFO though. We have a, an author coming up from the UK uh, who's written about uh, uh, sea creatures and yeah, cryptids. cryptids from all over the world. And, oh, wow. uh, and very, then we very have nice a, and then we have another one um, who is a paranormal investigator as well. Um, and we got to set that uh, that the the why with the the author. We have that one set up for September and. Uh, and his, the name other is, one... uh, his name is Andy McGrath. He's written a couple books, and um, we've been trying to get him on, but our one day our internet wasn't working, one day his internet wasn't working. Uh -huh. So we're going to have him back on in the uh, end of September, and he's uh, going to come on. So he's from the UK, and of course, there's a lot of things going on over there because a lot of people don't even think that you guys, you know, because, you know, you have a large population, uh, an island, um, plus, you know, you don't not as much tree cover as we do here in North mm -hmm. America. But they, and they don't think you know there's any kind of cryptids out there, but there most definitely is, um, and a lot of a lot of like little people and like forest people for sure. You guys have a lot of mm -hmm. spooky stuff over there. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, do you have any advice for me or anyone else uh, that is very new to podcasting? Well, maybe yeah, they, maybe I... they can tell us that because we're. <laughs> we're... <laughs> I, I actually would say, like Tom said, you know, about being genuine. Genuine is number one. Being consistent, you know. If you are releasing, make sure you release on the same day every day, you know, like on that day. So for us, it's Thursday. We always release on Thursday. We always have a podcast ready for Thursday. Um, and it's interacting with um, the audience. With the audience. Yeah. It, it's great, you know. And, you know, and, and if you have a if you have like a genre or not a genre but if you're kind of like if you're an interviewer who likes to joke and have fun continue with that don't change that if you're an interviewer who likes to go straight to the point and you know be concise with your with your questions be concise you know be be yourself just Which be authentic very interesting the first person he described was me and the second person he described was himself <laughs> <laughs> yeah T tom tom is the, yeah. the the comedy relief and i'm the like to the point asking the question so yeah, i've done entertainment for many years so it was just a kind of a you know the, if the shoe fits wear it kind of thing so yeah, and, um, yeah I'm sorry. amazing um, in one of your podcasts, you mentioned Mothman. Could you explain a little bit more about this man? Well, Mothman was a situation or a, um, a group or a whole bunch of experiences people were having in, I think it's Point Pleasant, West Virginia, and uh, on the other side of the border, I can't remember the name of the town, in Ohio. And it kind of, there was like these, um, they were seeing this creature that was uh, like kind of flying around, kind of Superman-like. Um, and it had like red eyes and like, uh, like, uh, like black wings. And these people were having a bunch of like dreams that were like, um, that ended up being yeah, like a prop, like they yeah. prophesized prophetic dreams, yeah, yeah. prophetic dreams. Thank you. Um, of this bridge that connected the, the towns, uh, over the Ohio river, uh, the, and, like the lady we, um, we interviewed a uh, shout out Linda, Linda Siegman, a very wonderful guest of ours, which we uh, enjoyed very much. She went into great detail about the things she experienced and she had like a download from a, a white orb the size of a Volkswagen Beetle and um, uh, and then there was she, a UFO as well. There was a UFO, UFO as Men well. in Black. Yep, Men in Black uh, there too. And then she's seen, she had a dream where like, it was around Christmas, I, I can't remember yeah, this the exact was, This date. was the shared dream, this prophetic dream right. that she had. Where she was hearing mm. call horns honking and seeing headlights out of the water and seeing like packages of gifts, uh, presents like floating down the Ohio River. And uh, because, because it was uh, yeah. near Christmas time, that's yeah. why she saw all of this. It was pretty incredible. So yeah, I don't, uh, I uh, know, of, you know, I always know. For me uh, personally, I like to know things kind of on a peripheral basis, and I like, you know, so like when a person is talking, I kind of go, yeah, Point Pleasant, like, mm. I think from '66 to '67 was like a two-year period there, and I kind of let them explain it to me, and so I get to experience it. Um, kind of at a first-hand basis from an eyewitness who's, who was there and I always find that to be more pleasurable and I also think that helps our audience members kind of also 
uh, feel the same thing that I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, <laughs> uh, what is the most interesting thing that you have learned about UFOs over your fa- fascinating podcast? Oh, I, from okay. Since it popped in my head, to, to, my my favorite story so far is that we had a we had a, um, a gentleman on his name is Patrick Doty D O T Y is that correct D O T Y? Yeah. He um, was working in Northern California one day, and he was with his four friends. They were somewhere uh, near the Sierra Mountains. Yeah, Sierra Vista, Sierra yeah. Mountains. And they were they were wrapping up for the day around four or five o'clock, and they were like, "Hey, let's wrap it up, let's go." And there was four of them, and they started headed back towards their pickup truck. And off in the distance, on the horizon, quite a ways, I don't know, quite a ways above the tree line, he seen this like white, like glowing ball, like going along the horizon. And then, as he seen it, he directed his friends towards it. He said, "Hey, look at that!" And as soon as he said that, the ball stopped. And then came at him, um, we believe, so fast because he he described it as it looked like it was like, like stopping, going, stopping, going. But every time it would stop and go, it would get larger. And he believes that like the we, we made a joke about it, it was like the the frame per second rate of this reality couldn't keep up to how fast it was. And then it stopped right in front of them all. They all freaked out, ran in the truck. The thing stood there. I don't remember how long it was. Stayed there for a second and then shot directly up into the sky, went through a slit in the sky. And disappeared, but no. But for me, the most amazing part about it—I don't know how much longer later, maybe uh, two weeks, a month, something like this—he was working at a function where it was like a concert or something like this, and he was pulling security with a friend of his who was also there. And mm-hmm. um, there was like a you know a coat room area and like a little kitchen area where he can make food for people and stuff. And his friend comes to him sometimes during sometimes during the middle of this, and he's like, "Hey, there's uh, these two people in here." And in the kitchen, like eating food. Could you come in there with me and we can kind of get him out of there? This is weird. So he's like, sure, I'll go in. He goes in there, he sees these two people, and they're both no, I'm six foot three, so they're six foot five. I guess it's with a meter 97, something like this, 98. Oh, oh. welcome to Mexico. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, they're just in there. He's like, Hey, what are you guys doing in there? And they proceed to describe to him. The event on the mountain range, like wow. we've seen you. We normally don't tell people this. We've seen you there. We know what happens. We know who you are, and it kind of indicated to him that they uh, don't say anything about it. And these two people were like very tall, very light skinned, blue eyes, blonde hair, and they spoke like with a Swedish accent, which mm-hmm. is known in the UFO community as like the Nordics. And that to me was the creepiest. Most exciting one for me so far. That sure. sounds like a movie of some sort, doesn't it? it? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like for me, one of the the biggest things that I have uh, been, you know, been privy to now is that these UFOs um, are reacting to our thoughts. You know, they're 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 they're, you know, our subconscious is affecting these UFOs. Like when Tom said when he when he saw this thing flying across the Sierras, there's no way he would have seen it except something told him to look up in this direction. So he looked up, that's when he saw it. When he told his friends, that's when it stopped, that it came towards them. Now, this seems to be something that keeps reoccurring um, where people are being told to look here or look there, or when they send a, and this is gonna sound crazy, like when they send a telepathic thought, you know, when they think in their mind, they're able to affect like this, this, I don't know what it is. This this UFO reacts to some people's thoughts. Um, you know, if they say, you know, if you're really here, show me. Or if you're, you know, if, if you're understanding me, then can you can you do something? And they'll change color. They'll change direction. They'll stop moving. It's something crazy like that. They'll all do that. And that that ties into. I don't know if you guys heard of CE5. Um, have you heard of CE5? No, I haven't. No. No. Okay, CE5 is where it's it's contact. It's like making contact. But it's you making contact. It's a group of people will go out and sit out someplace where, you know, there's not much light pollution, where there's not any light pollution. And they will collectively 
ask for UFOs to show up. They'll ask for UFOs to appear. And so this is the, the fifth kind, the contact of the fifth kind, where they're putting this out and they invite the UFOs to appear. And I have I had a friend from another podcast called Grimerica. He used to do this and he he swears by it. He says, no, this this happens. This contact of the fifth kind is where you yourself are calling in the UFOs and they appear. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's that's, that's, that's amazing. That's honestly amazing. It's it's it's. Uh, I, I'll I'll explain my kind of um, situation here. I'm I'm obviously I'm obviously Daniel's dad. Dan, okay. uh, Dan, Daniel is a uh, an incredible young man. He's 14 years old. He's not he's not like other 14 years old uh, kids in in the UK. And he's he started this podcast. He started with this stuff through his interest. Now I'm generally just here to sit back and just you know as a dad just to make sure everything's okay. One uh, yes. But I'm, yes. but I've been, I've been drawn into this. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, Daniel, what did you do, Daniel? Because <laughs> I'm meant, to, I'm meant to be here, just going, okay, just yeah, okay, Daniel, go on then, you know, and and yeah. and I'm fascinated by this. This is incredible. So, in all the, in all, all of your interviews and all the research that you've done, um, is there ever been one consistent kind of? Um, a kind of look of, a, of of something or something that all of them have done you know is it the changing shape is it you know is there anything that's consistent throughout most of the stories uh, well there so as we piecing as we're starting to piece this together there there is some tie-ins and some of them and this is like when I first started down this path, you know, this is not things I ever considered, but the more and more you hear about this, the more and more it becomes relevant is glowing orbs, UFO, mm -hmm. Dogman, and Bigfoot all together. Uh, right. And the, and the paranormal wow. to, to, to a bit, to a degree. It's like somehow all interconnected, some type yeah. of phenomenon that's all connected together. Yeah, it, it is. It, And it's what you believe in the physics or, you know, what should, you know, the laws of physics for this world don't exist when it when it becomes to these creatures. Yeah, they don't apply. No, it does not apply. Um, like like I said, there's you, people will spot UFOs, then they'll see glowing orbs, and then a, then a, like a dogman or a Bigfoot will appear. And it's that that's one thing that I can say that seems to tie in with these. Like of course, each experience is unique on its own, but some of them have these connections and. Also, last night, we just did a, a very lengthy interview last night, but his story started to connect all of some of our other episodes. Like our episode two, uh, it came through a portal where one of our listeners describes how Bigfoot grabbed a, <laughs> grabbed a branch off a tree and hit the tree. It opened some sort of energy gateway and it stepped through and left. And <laughs> now... Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and our and this and our latest uh, interview that we just did uh, last night, he was describing how if, if these Bigfoot hit a tree once, it it's kind of like a warning that there's people in the area. If they're hitting it multiple times, it's saying you know like danger. So and this coincides with this because he was watching this UFO. I mean, sorry, UFO. He was watching this Bigfoot do this, and it was looking over its shoulder. And that's when, after it went through this portal, he says, you know, maybe like 30 seconds, a minute later, a group of people walked over this hill exactly where this Bigfoot was watching. Sure. Now, wow. was, it doing, was it hitting it once to say that there's people in the area or was it hitting it to open this portal? Or is it kind of like a uniform kind of thing? Does it go together? It's, you know, the more stories I hear, the more I don't know, you know, the more questions I have. You think you understand, mm -hmm. but then people bring in more aspects, more things, and you're just like, it's so fascinating. It's so riveting. Daniel, do you mind if Daniel, do you mind if I ask you a question? Yeah, go on. That. So you're being a 14 year old young man in your adolescence. What is it about? I'm, I'm, I can see that you're very interested in UFOs, but what is it about what you've either experienced or are into that makes you want to do this or like podcast about it and get the information out? So it start it, it started with uh, me watching a program and I I was lining up some of the things between Bigfoot and being a flesh and blood creature and then with these strange orbs flying above um, and, I, and I was trying to piece it together because I'm one for I, I like to know the answer and I, I couldn't 
know the answer between Bigfoot and these flying orbs, which is which is what m- has got me interested into UFOs because of uh, these orbs flying above. Yeah. And I, 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 I'm sure Daniel won't mind me saying that Daniel's autistic, um, and so that 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 quest for an answer is quite important to him. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And having having um, watching, I think it was uh, Expedition Bigfoot was what Daniel yep. was watching, and he became oh. quite obsessed with it. And he was he was he started making his own expeditions here in the UK, just in a way of trying to contribute to the you know to to the to the cause. And the more he looked into it, you know, he was talking to me about the the whole kind of like you know lights being associated with Bigfoot, and and I was like, yeah, Daniel, okay, fine. And it's like, yeah, Dad, yeah. I, want to, I, want, I, I want to do a podcast. Okay, Daniel, that's fine. And now I'm actually thinking I'm taking over this podcast because Daniel, I've got another question for them. Is that okay? That's all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, that's, that's fine. fine. Son, I'm sorry. And Craig, that's Craig's all right. Craig, <laughs> Craig, being a father myself, I, I, I think it's very admirable that you are interested in what your child is interested in, whether it be, um, you know, um, BMX riding or motocross yeah. or some craziness or, you know, Bigfoot and orbs. More power Absolutely. to you. Why not? More power Why not? to you, Daniel. More power. <laughs> I think. I I think that you're enjoying this more more than I am. I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, so guys, um, just with again with all the interviews you've done and the research you've done, I'm I'm I really don't have a lot of knowledge about it. But just a real quick one, if it can be a quick one, I don't know. But, but what's your thoughts on the whole Area 51? Uh, well, that's more up my alley. I'm more. Is that okay? I'm a conspiracy guy uh, through and through. I uh, I think that the government knows all about this, and they've been knowing about it at least since the atomic, uh, ex- at least since the Trinity test in the 1940s. Sure. And, and um, you know, like kind of Star Trekky, they were driving by, and they got the signature of the gamma rays or whatever's coming off of that. And ever since then, they were they were in con- they've been in contact with us. Um, we've probably um, retrieved some of their um, downed um, things, uh, just like that one gentleman who was on the Rogan podcast, who was his name, uh, Bob uh, Lazar. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think they're, but the thing is, at the same time, uh, Area 51, that means there's Area 1 through 50. We don't know where those are. <laughs> I mean, if you just think logically. <laughs> I've never even thought about that. That, is, that just blown my mind. <laughs> Honestly, how have I not thought Good, good luck sleeping tonight, Craig. I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness but yeah um i don't know i don't know what to make of it but we know that the u.s government has trillions of dollars wrapped up in black ops and mm-hmm. especially with this new um what are they, they calling the light or easy uh releasing where they're releasing the information oh, through NASA. Uh, soft disclosure so thank you through soft mm-hmm. disclosure i uh i don't believe any i'm a like i said i'm a i'm a u.s citizen and i don't take any weight in what the government spell tells me especially when it comes to an agency as kind of shady as nasa so i don't know man it's like uh well i i, yeah. I actually believe that like, area 51 i think was a back engineering location where they back engineered a lot of these crafts now now that it becomes so public that's not anymore you know like you you can't be like oh yeah we're still doing all that work here when everybody knows about area 51 because people mm. know about area 51 that now is just a in my opinion is a diversion everybody look over here well the real stuff is happening in area you know i don't know 72 or seven or yeah. area 31 let's, let's go 13 that's one. area 13 that's a little, that's a little <laughs> yeah i definitely believe that it was original one of the original locations um where they back engineered the craft but i still believe that they are testing um prototype aircraft there that have uh technology that is not of this world and that's why there's been such jumps and you know improvements within technology like in the last 30 years we've had so many increases in technology it's crazy and my guess is back engineering of products of not of this world or not mm. I, I don't want to say not of this world not of this known world that's what i'll yeah. say yeah Oh, that's fascinating. Sorry, Daniel, I'll, I'll hand it back to you. <laughs> so I, just wanted, I wanted to get that in there. Sorry, you're probably... Dad! That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to pay for that later. <laughs> um, are there any other things that you investigate or have an interest in? I, I'm, I, I, personally, I'm a big fan of like uh, the paranormal. I don't know if it's a fan, 
Uh, but <laughs> I've uh, I've had some interesting experiences. I've had. Um, if you want to hear them real quick, real quick. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Straight. I'll give you a choice between the Hat Man or Poltergeist. Oh. Get your stuff. Poltergeist. Okay, that's, that's a, a better one. That's, that's a better one. one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, it was it was kind of a Vegas thing. I was letting you guys spin spin the uh, roulette wheel there. Uh, <laughs> so uh, when I was eight years old, I had to live with my grandmother. Um, so it was me, my sister, uh, my father, my mother. We lived with my grandmother and her husband, and uh, we lived in the back room of a three bedroom house in a row home in Baltimore, Maryland. That's where I'm from. And uh, my mother and my father were previously married. So my mother had uh, joint custody of her first daughter in her first marriage. And on the weekends, when she came out, she was like 12, 13, 11, something like somewhere around that at the time. And um, when she came out, uh, things would like happen. And um, so I was eight. My younger sister is seven, six years old, something like this. And we all stayed in one room. I had my bed on the left side of the room. They had their bed on the right side of the room. And like I said, things would happen. Um, so when she came over, um, we go, all right, time to go to sleep, you know, washed up dinner, all that, you know, all that good stuff went and laid down. And then all of a sudden just, you know, things like the lights would flick off and on. Um, uh, um, we would, I would, it was very scary. Uh, so my little sister would run down the stairs and say, Hey, the lights are going off and on there. Ah, oh, you guys are playing, go upstairs. Uh, she'd come back up the steps and then we'd okay let's go to bed and then the lights would go off and on and shoes would be thrown at us from the floor. oh my god that's oh the worst god. nightmare in it. <laughs> yeah imagine daniel eight years old yeah. that's only imagine <laughs> six years six years ago from where you are now um, I'm, 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 I'm nearly 44 and I wouldn't be able to handle that. I'll be well, you're the, same, oh, you're the same age. So Craig, you're the same age I am, Craig. I was born, okay, in, 19, I was born in 1980 as well. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, so shoes are flying around. I'm losing my mind. And uh, I was more of the, the scaredy pooper in comparison to my two sisters, especially my youngest sister. She was the brave one. And she kept going downstairs and saying, hey, this stuff is happening. They would never believe her. So at one point, I'm laying in the bed. Yeah, I'm laying in the bed, and between the bed and the wall, there's a little space of about you know, three to four inches, whatever. And I'm laying there, and I felt this hand come up. No. The bed. Oh, my no. God. <laughs> and, I'm out. <laughs> Craig, Craig <laughs> leaves the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> and it touched me on my chest. Oh. And, I, and I jumped up out of bed like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. And... <laughs> and I was like, ah, and my sister's like, what? And I'm like, something touched me. And, uh, you know, the little sister runs downstairs again. I'm standing up now. She comes back up the steps and to describe how the house is kind of laid out. So she goes through the the second room. Uh, you have to go up the steps, make a right. The first room is on the left, go to the right. Second room, third room, we're in the third room. She's coming back. The door swings into the room that oh. I'm standing in. The door is on my right swings into the room where i'm standing so for me to close the door i have to swing it forward mm -hmm. so she's coming up the steps once again they don't believe this kind of thing and i go so what did they say and as I, as soon as i said that the door slammed in my little sister's face and oh, Jesus. I wow was, yeah. i was scared now i was scared stiff i'm scared stiff now and i just yeah. hearing it. I, <laughs> yeah. that's crazy she yeah. opened the she opened the door, said, uh, did you slam the door on me? And I said, no. Um, then a little while later, I guess, I didn't see this. My sister says she experienced this. And um, she, we used, do you remember, uh, Craig, you would remember this. Do you remember the show Alf? Oh, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> yeah, where, he would, where he would eat the cats and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. My sister said at one point when the lights were flickering off and on, she could see the, she had an Alf doll that sat in a little, like, little high chair for kids. And it's, it started dancing. Oh, yeah. So, oh, my God. So, yeah, that's and then kind of, you know, teetered away. There was like also I had to they put the sheet on me because I'm scared. And I felt like the air blowing between the sheet and me and the mattress. And yeah, so I, I've been wow. kind of messed. I've been messed up since then. Yeah, and that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, uh, that's, that's now I'm going to be thinking about so that. Tom, tonight. Yeah, how, Tom. how many Area 51s are I, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm not sleeping tonight now. Yeah, I went to my psychiatrist years later. They're like, so Tom, why do you have anxiety and depression? And I'm like, I don't know. Okay, so, yeah. So. Wow, what a story. That's that's incredible. That's yeah. absolutely incredible. <laughs> um. So my last question is, where is your, uh, your podcast and how can our listeners follow and stay in contact with you? 
Daniel, very professional of you. You're killing it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we can be found, of course, uh, we have a Facebook group, you know, the Lost uh, Frequency Podcast. We have a Facebook group. Uh, we can be found on Spotify and just about every other platform. You know, we, we make sure we branch out to just every other platform, you know, whether it be Apple, uh, Google, or mm-hmm. Pod, Podbean. Podbean, or, uh, Podca- or Pod Addict. Pod Addict, uh, YouTube. We're also on TikTok. We're just trying to get mm-hmm. ourselves out there as much as we possibly can. And then if and, any yeah. of your listeners want to contact us, have stories, you know, we are... You you can yeah. email us at the lost frequency podcast at gmail.com or you can find mm-hmm. us on Facebook, uh, Rai Voss mm-hmm. or Tom Franklin. Yeah. And uh, you hear that, <laughs> England? You hear that, England? The, the lost frequency podcast is calling you to come on because we know and I know <laughs> that England is one of the most craziest places when it comes to these type of things. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. And I just want to say, you know, uh, Daniel, you know, I, what I think you what I think you're doing is amazing. You know, you're, it's really brave of you to get Thanks. out there and to start a podcast, and you're, you're doing it really well too. I listened to a couple of your episodes. You do it. Uh, you hand yourself oh, very nice. well. Very professional and very grown, very grown up, and just yeah. keep keep at it, buddy. Yeah, and Craig, you're I'm doing nice. a good job raising your son. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still. My my jaw's still open from those stories. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm I, sorry Craig. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> No, you've de- you've de- you've definitely got a couple of fans, and I appreciate all your supportive words for Daniel because it's uh, it means a lot to him, and he, you know, he's uh, he's 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 absolutely bossing it, and he, he's you know he's doing so well. Well, it means a lot to us too, Craig. Yeah, it means a lot. Yeah, <laughs> we really we we appreciate it. You know, we, we appreciate you know we we all start somewhere, and yeah. you know, when anybody asks us to come on their podcast we are we are there you know and if if daniel if you ever want us back on in the future by all means hit us up and we'll be there for you and we have more stories amazing 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 (laughs) thanks okay guys i'll 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 see you in our next podcast keep searching and stay mythical okay guys bye cheers guys thanks thanks Bye. Bye. bye bye